In the early 1900s, an incredible spiritual revival took place. The Azusa Street Revival was a historic series of revival meetings that took place in Los Angeles, California, led by William J. Seymour. The revival that began on April 9, 1906 and continued roughly until about 1915. At 25 years of age, Seymour had lost sight in his left eye due to smallpox, but this did not hinder his passion for the calling he knew God had placed on his life. In 1905, Seymour, the one-eyed son of a freed slave, became the student of a well-known preacher, Mr. Charles Parham. Now remember, at this time in 1905, the African-American community was not allowed to be educated the same way as their white counterparts, especially in a place like Texas, where the laws forbid blacks to even sit in the same classroom as whites. So Parham encouraged Mr. Seymour to remain in the hallway and to listen to the lectures through the doorway. So instead of attending the classes, Seymour had to sit in the hallway and take notes while Parham talked. These lectures, they were life-changing to Seymour. The teachings he needed to rise up and to fulfill the calling that was on his life. Soon after, Neely Terry, an African-American woman who attended a small holiness church in Los Angeles, she made a trip to visit some family in Houston, Texas in late 1905. While in Houston, she visited Seymour's church where he preached on receiving the Holy Spirit. Terry was so impressed by the character and the message of Mr. Seymour that once back at home in California, Terry suggested that Seymour be invited to come and speak at her local church. When Seymour arrived in Los Angeles, California on February 22, 1906, he preached at Julia Hutchins Church at the corner of 9th Street and Santa Fe Avenue. During his first sermon, he preached that speaking in tongues was a biblical evidence of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That following Sunday, he returned to the church to find that Hutchins had padlocked the doors. The elders of the church rejected Seymour's teachings. However, not all members of Hutchins Church rejected Seymour's preaching. He was invited to stay in the home of one of the congregation members, Mr. Edward S. Lee, and he began to hold Bible studies and prayer meetings there. Soon, Seymour and his small group of new followers relocated to the home of Richard and Ruth Asbury at 216 North Bonnie Bray Street, where the group would get together regularly and pray to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then, on April 9th, 1906, three days into a 10-day intended fast, Edward S. Lee spoke in tongues for the very first time. And at the next meeting, Seymour shared Lee's testimony and preached a sermon on Acts chapter 2, verse 4, and soon six others began to speak in tongues as well. This included Jeannie Moore, who would later become Seymour's wife. A few days later, on April 12th, Seymour himself finally spoke in tongues for the very first time after praying all night long. News of this event at North Bunny Bray Street quickly circulated around the African-American, the Latino, and the white residents of the city. For several nights, various speakers would preach to the crowds of curious and interested onlookers from the porch of the Asbury home. Members of the audience included people from a broad spectrum of income levels and religious backgrounds. Hutchins herself eventually spoke in tongues as her whole congregation began to attend these meetings. Soon, it got to a place where the crowds became so very large and were so full of people speaking in tongues and shouting and singing till finally the front porch actually collapsed, forcing the group to begin looking for a new meeting place. Historian Vincent Sion recalls the residents of the neighborhood describing the happenings at 216 North Bonnie Bray Street with the following words. They shouted three days and three nights. It was the Easter season. The people came from everywhere. By the next morning, there was no way of getting near the house. As people came, they would fall under the power of God and the whole city was stirred. They shouted and shouted until the foundation of the house gave way now more than ever, we need revival to come again. We need fresh outpouring of God's spirit on our nation. The question is, will you join us this month as we pray and fast together as a church, asking God to move, asking him to use us, asking him to do something in our lives, 
something that's so disproportionate, so far beyond our strength and our power, our wisdom and our knowledge, that when we look back on this moment, we will clearly know that the fingerprint of God was on our church. Will you be a part of the revival?